Brother Mar, we will have a choir again one day. It's easier to spread out at a distance out here than up here. Y'all get jammed together. So, Mark, I had a dream one night this week. We had a choir again. You couldn't even fit them all. They was from one end to the other, and we was, we was, we was, yeah, we was raising, raising the roof. We were singing so loud, and we're gonna see that again one day. But for now, just congregational singing. All right. I'm preaching through the Bible, but we're going to take a detour. God laid a message on my heart this week. Matthew 13. Turn to Matthew chapter 13. I want to preach this thought. Good seed or weeds? Seed or weeds? Which is it? Good seed or weeds? Wheat or tares? Which is growing? Matthew 13. That's a big parable chapter. They five or six parables in here about mostly, well, agriculture and other things too. This is a good chapter. <clears throat> Matthew 13, verse 24, we find this, 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blades was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householders came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field, from whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. But let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn, the good seed are bad weeds. Which is it? Mr. Aikens always leads us in prayer. We hope he's not sick. We don't know why he's here, but since we record these, Andrew, lead us in prayer into that microphone, okay? God, thank you for this sermon. And just please help him preach it. And please let it all speak through us to the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Andrew. 
I got the inspiration for this sermon this week, not from the Bible first. I had a life experience that then took my mind back to the Bible. Okay, so we went backwards this week on this sermon. But I think there's a good message here. And I know some of y'all are into vegetable gardening, and some of you aren't, some of you don't care. And you probably get tired sometimes of my watermelon stores. I know you do. But just bear with me. I can't help it. I don't have nothing better to talk about than, than a watermelon. But anyway... Never, just, just bear with me. God teaches us lesson. We got why well, we all have our interests. Some of y'all into NASCAR. I couldn't give a flip about NASCAR for nothing. I don't care if ever one of them cars run off a cliff. I, I want to make it hurt. I mean, I just don't. Not my thing. Okay, but we all got our thing. But me and Andrew, we love to garden. But I had experience this week, and this frustrating. We, we plant our garden, and, and you always hope you get just the right the amount of rain. We've had years where we got this perfect rain. I mean, about twice a week. And everything's just good. I mean, good, good to eat, good to sell. Then there's other years where it just don't rain at all. And, and, and your melons grow up and they get about this big and then they get lopsided because there's water on one side and dry on the other. And it's just might as well throw them out. Then you have years where it rains too much. And then the roots rot and everything rots, you know. And I don't know where we're at right now, but right now we're getting about too much. But nevertheless, you take what God gives you. But nevertheless, one of my favorite plants is okra. I love good fried okra, okay, I really do. And I was determined this year we're going to have good okra and we're going to have plenty of it. We have so much okra last year, my kids got sick of it, got to complaining about it, but I didn't get sick of it. But nevertheless, I planted a whole row and a half. I mean, I got a row about 60 foot long, and I planted a halfway run. I had a little more room. I come back the other way and planted it. I said, we're going to have good okra. We're going to freeze some of it. But the craziest thing happened, uh, I planted it with a, with, a, with a cedar, with a wheel thing, you know, and so you don't exactly know like where all your mounds are because you just you just rolling that thing out in a row. But they begin to come up, and I was so proud of them. I was just, I was just proud as I could be. I said, "Boy, I, I just taste it. It looks so good." But when something's brand new, a plant first comes up, you can't. Somehow you, me myself now, I'm not a professional gardener enough to know. I can't tell when it first springs up if it's the good fruit you planted or some kind of wild weed. At first, it all looks the same. Okay, so I saw this pretty green row, Brother Jeff. I mean, it was sure was nice. I said, boy, that's going to taste good. But as it began to grow, I went out last week, and I realized amongst my okra row, because I hadn't tilled it because I thought it was all good, some kind of weed, some kind of, I don't even know what to call it, but it had a leaf on it uh, that, that looked to me, I mean, in it, in it, when it's that tall, it looked just like the okra leaf. I couldn't tell it apart. So I didn't weed them out. I just let it grow. Well, what's end up happening out of about 80 foot of okra, I, I might at the most, I might have five or six good okra plants. The rest of it, that old wild weed, it just, it overtook my seed. And I guess it sucked all the moisture, all the rain, and it killed my little okra plants as best I can figure. But I mean, out of all that work, I might have five or six okra plants. So we just going to have, we want okra, well, I guess we're going to have to go on up to Kroger and buy it with the rest of the folks, okay? But nevertheless, I got looking at that was discouraging because I went to a lot of work. And I couldn't tell the weed from the good seed, but good from the bad, you know. And my mind came back to this parable. And it says here, this is about the same thing. Because Jesus always spoke in parables because these people were farmers. He had to, the, the, the rabbis sometimes got way above their heads in speaking. The rabbis wanted to show how much they knew. Christ just wanted to get the gospel level down on the common man's level where they could understand it. And they all knew when he said, and that's what I'm trying to do, is just, just get it where we can understand it. Okay? But when he said a farmer went out and he sold his wheat, and he was so proud of it because he's going to have the best wheat harvest ever. And let me say, wheat was, was then so essential to that society because they made the bread out of it. And a lot of times in the gospel you read, all they had to eat was their wheat bread, loaves and fish. Didn't have anything else. They didn't have the didn't have a Golden Corral buffet. I mean, if you had some dig, you had a, you had a couple of a fish with the bones in them, not even filet, and, and a loaf of bread. And he's proud to get it. Said grace over it, you know. So when you've sown and you think, we're going to have bread, we're going to have bread, we're going to have bread. But a funny thing happened. After he sowed it, the, 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 the farmer and his helpers were asleep at night and it said an enemy came up. And the enemy began to sow these tares. It, all I can say, just some kind of wild weed. And it was so sneaky that at first when they began to bud up, the wheat and the tares all looked the same. So the farmer didn't think anything about it. 
But as it began to grow up, it became obvious. He did not have a good, pure field full of wheat. He had weeds growing everywhere. And the, the, and, and the, the servants go to the man and they say, what should we do? Should we try to pull them all up? He said, no, let them grow together. You go to pulling up the weeds, you're going to pull up what wheat we got. We got a little wheat. You're going to pull that up too. If you start pulling that, the roots are all intertangled. You pull the bad up, good's coming with it. Just let them grow together. When it come harvest time, we're going to separate them. So the truth of the story and the, the, the meaning is this. Right now in this world, who's saved, who's lost? Only I've heard it preached before. Three know. You know God knows and the devil. Sometimes you might not even know. I mean, you, people get confused and blinded in their mind. But the truth is right now when the harvest comes, God's going to know the, he's gonna know the, 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 the wheat from the tares. Okay, He's come back and going to make a separation. You better know for sure you amongst the wheat that you're saved and one of His. Good seed or bad weeds. I mean, we all that. And it's what it all makes a difference is Christ in your heart. Amen. We, 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 we had in Sunday school this morning with the teens, the lesson was on Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 talks about Christ, the suffering servant. And when you read that chapter of all Christ did for us, how that His face was marred and He was nailed and beaten and by His stripes we are healed. Can you believe any man would love you and I, just sinners, to such a degree as to do that for us? Accept Him in your heart. No other man will ever love you and give so much for you and be saved today and know for sure you are amongst the wheat. Amen. Because harvest is coming and the wheat will be separated from the tares. And He said, You shall bind the tares and cast them into the fire. Amen. Now that's the meaning. Are you saved or lost? Are you good seed or wild weeds? Think about that. But I won't take this thing just a level further. I won't take it to each person. Because even once you're saved, you got to know stuff grows in our heart. And stuff grows. And it might. The, 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 I would like to tell you that once you get saved, the devil never speaks to you or bothers you again. I'd like to tell you that. I really would. I'd like to tell you he's going to run away from you. And I've told you before about that friend I had in college that swear he'd never sinned since he got saved. He said, my sin nature got eradicated. I said, so when did you get saved, Jay? That was his name. When I was 14. I said, so you trying to tell me since you're 14, now you're 21, you ain't sinned, not a time. I said, buddy, I said, I said, you better, I said, I said, the ceiling's about to fall in. I said, you tell the biggest lie I've ever heard in my life right now. I said, you sin and worse than anything I'm doing. I said, you lie like that. Let me tell you, the devil, the devil just calls you weed. He keeps trying to sow weeds in your life. Do y'all believe that? He does. Now our job is to be a diligent gardener. Yes, had I been a little bit more careful and watched a little closer, I could have told a weed from a good okra seed. I could have told the difference. I just got careless. And when you get careless in your life, it is amazing what the enemy, the devil, can sow. Let me say this morning, I see two. I see the good in this story. I see the bad. I see a good farmer and he's sowing good seed. And who is that farmer but the Lord Jesus Christ and sowing these seed through those that speak His Word. And the good seed, what is that? But the Word of God and the Gospel message that can change lives. But then I see the bad in the story. And that's the bad sower. And who is it but Satan? and those that He uses as messengers and tools in this world to sow destructive, sapping seeds. That's nothing but a weed. And I'm going to tell you both that this morning, even right now, and even today in your life, the good sower is trying to sow in your life, but the devil ain't going to let it be. He's going to try so bad. What's sowing in your life this morning? Let me say, I just want to take this this morning and talk real quickly about four good seed God wants to sow in your life and show you the opposite the devil wants to sow. And they all begin with the level P. You can write this down if you want to, okay? Number one, let me say this morning in your life, God would like to sow peace in your life, but the devil wants to sow fear. Y'all believe that? This, we're going through some crazy times in our world. There's some times that keep you up worrying at night. I'm not going to lie to you about it. And it ain't nothing to make no joke about. But I, I know one thing. I know that Jesus Christ put His hands on the leper and healed them. I know that our health and our wellness 
in the ultimate end depends on the Lord Jesus Christ and He protects His people. Do y'all believe that today? I'm trying to tell you this morning, folks, we've we got to have peace. we got to have peace that our life's in the hands of God, you know. And I've seen some crazy things before, and like I say, you see, uh, I, I, it was just the craziest thing happened just, just a week ago. You know, I've, uh, 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 Jody Burgess, who used to take care of my mom, uh, the, the, rents a house up here, and, and, and Ricky... This, there too. I, I'm awfully worried about Ricky because, and Alan, you're good friends with Ricky Tellis. You know who I'm talking about. But I said to Jeff, I said, we'd, we'd done one visit on a Monday night. I said, we got to do another one. The parents telling me to go pray for Ricky because he's dealing with cancer and taking chemo treatments. And I, I've tried and tried to get Ricky to come to church. And Alan, I know you've tried. He says, I don't have any decent clothes. And I've told him, Ricky, come in your, come in your sweatpants if that's what you got. We're we, we looking past that. We care about you as a person. Okay, and it had been unsuccessful. But every now and then we stop and have a scripture and a prayer with him, don't we? And and we, but I, I said we need to do that because oh my goodness, I'd been up there and cut the grass up there at my rental house this week before, and his arms and legs looked like toothpicks. It was something else. Well, we went up there and we prayed for him, and Jody was in the other end of the house, and we just said head to her, didn't think nothing about it in the world. I didn't think about her. I, you know, in my mind, Ricky might not make it long because he's dealing with cancer. I didn't think. I won't tell you the next day, the next day Jody had a heart attack was gone. And why do you tell that story, Brother Ted? Are you trying? I'm telling you, we don't know the day and hour we're going. And I'm telling you, when you look at one person and think, boy, they're sick, they're not going to make it long. They might make it 30 more years. And you look at another person, it looks like they're ready to join the Olympics. And they did the next day. So the open thing is, is uh, well, we got to have peace. Our life, our health. You do all you can to be healthy and safe. All you can, but in the bottom line, I mean, we, we've all known those cases. That we, we've known those cases, those old timers, Steve and our family, those old timers that ate lard every day and lived in their 90s. And then, and then people, our generation, fall dead at 40 with a heart attack. You can't explain all that. But one thing for sure, folks, you, the, the, the God that wants to sow this, the seed of peace in your life to know that your life, your well-being, your safety, and everything is up to Him and in His hands. But the devil's going to sow fear amongst you and make you afraid to live and make you afraid to, 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 to leave the house and do anything and whatnot. I remember one time, it's been a long time ago, I was witnessing a man and invited him to church. And that man said, I'm not coming. I said, okay, would you mind telling me why do you believe in God? I believe in God, but I'm not coming. I said, why? He said, he said I'm scared if I leave my house, I could go to church, somebody will rob my house. So I stand there with my guns. Now he told me that, I ain't kidding you. I said, that poor guy's got a case of fear like I ain't never believed. You don't think God's going, look, I might be here in church, my house might get robbed. I might get in the car and go home and have a wreck and get killed. I don't know what's going to happen. But ultimately, the day I was born was up to God and the day He takes me home was up to God. I'm trying to tell you this morning, folks, I see in our world today that Jesus Christ wants to sow a good seed of peace in your heart. Not fear, that's the tear. That's the weed. Let's go a little bit farther. Let's cover these peas, okay? Number two, I believe with all my heart, I believe that God wants to sow power in our lives. Power. What's happened to God's people having power? I'm telling you, when I was a... Brother Jeff, I, when, when, when I was a little boy, I used to... And I am a Baptist, okay? I'm not Pentecostal, my doctor, okay? But I remember when I was a little boy that the Briscoes would invite me to church on Sunday night and I would go to the church of God on Sunday night. And I'm you talking about some power. I'm talking about they'd get that we they they'd sing for over start at six. You might get done singing at seven thirty. And old preacher Larry Timmer, I never heard a man anointed God like that. He would preach for about an hour. Well, I'm trying to say, how do you sit for three hours and not be going crazy? Because the spirit was so real. And then the old call kicked in about 8.30 and it'd go about 30 minutes. And I'm talking about some old timers in the altar praying. I mean praying out loud. I mean it was real. I'm talking about, I'm trying to say folks, nowadays people have got afraid to show emotion, to raise their hand, to pray out loud. It's like how can I make my prayer as short as I can? I'm talking about what happened to God's people praying and witnessing and living their lives with the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you, we got to have power. God wants no power. There's a lot of enemies in this world, folks, and they aimed at Christian people in our politics, 
in our social cup society, we got to have power to live the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to sow power in your life. The devil's trying to sow weakness. Which are you going to let grow in the fields of your heart? Let's go a little bit further, folks. Number four today. Number P. I said power, peace. I believe God wants to sow, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to sow purity in our hearts. But the devil, perversion. Oh, I'm telling you, it is so easy to get caught up in perverse things because they are everywhere. Immoral things, filthy things. It is really hard to find good content with movies and TVs. And it's so easy, and I'm guilty as anybody else, it's so easy to watch something you really ought not because it's just so perversion in your mind. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? But Jesus Christ is pure. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you let the things of the world contaminate your heart. That's weeds growing. And it chokes the good stuff God wants to do. Amen. The first thing you know, you'll be feeding off of that. You know, the, the, the perversions. Perversions of lust. Perversions of addictions to substances. Perversions of... of, of of other things, the devil will take that and he'll choke it. And somebody will say, well, I can do this, this, and this, but I still live for the Lord. Trouble about it is, you do this, this, and this. That's a weed growing in your life. It's going to do to your life and the good seed of the gospel like the weeds did to my okra. It's going to get the nourishment and choke it. You know? Jesus Christ, He come to save us and to cleanse us from sin and to make us a peculiar people that people see His grace and purity in our life. That the devil's filth. Oh, I'm telling you this morning, folks, this sower right here, he tried to do a good job. He sowed that wheat best he could. And he said, it's going to be beautiful. Let's grow. And I will say, what more could the Lord Jesus Christ do than He's done for me and you? To give your life a ransom for sin. He has saved you and me. And He wants to sow good seed in your life. But take your eye off for a minute and the enemy will sow a little wild tearing weed. Number four this morning, we want to shut this thing down. I want to say the Lord wants to sow a seed of purpose in your life. But the, the, the devil so chaos. What do you mean purpose? I mean, God's got a plan for everybody's life. How many people, how many men would be called to preach if they'd let God have His will and way in their life. How many? How many could be Sunday school teachers, could be this or that, could do something good if you'd let God have His will? There's so many good purposes and things that you can do in your life. Amen. There's that of giving the witness in the Word. There's that of giving the witness by, by reaching out to somebody in need. And I told y'all before, and y'all did while we had our church shut down for eight weeks, we have never received so much food for the co-op. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Some brought to my front porch, some to the back porch of this church. But I told you that story. I'll tell it again because it wasn't hardly nobody here when I told it. But Rachel went, she'd go every Monday morning and take all that. And she went up there and she said that at the co-op, there's a line clear around the parking lot, a big old circle, and there's cops everywhere trying to keep peace. You know? And the cop, she started to the door, and the cop said, Ma'am, you got to get in the back of the line. She said, I'm not here to get food. I'm here to make a donation. He said, oh, Okay, ma'am, you go ahead then. But that just touched my heart. What I'm trying to tell you is there's so many. We miss so many opportunities to do good to our neighbor in need. We miss so many opportunities to be a witness to our lost neighbor. We miss so many opportunities to touch a child's life, an adult life with the gospel. I'm telling you, Christ has such a will and purpose and a work for all of us to do. But rather than letting that good seed of His purpose and plan in our life take form, the devil sows weeds of chaos. That's right. Because when you let the devil have his way, your life just goes in circles and never accomplishes anything. And you're always mixed up. Y'all believe me this morning? I'm telling you this morning about we got two sowers, the Lord and the devil. Who's doing the work in your garden? Who's sowing in your life this morning? Amen. Mark, come on get a song and I'm going to wrap it up. Would there be one there here this morning that would say... Brother Ted, I guess I am a tear. My whole life I've never been saved. Would you come to the altar? Would you stay after church? And let's, let's have a sinner's prayer together and accept Christ as your Savior. There'd be another one say, Brother Ted, I'm saved. I'm weak. But I turn my back and the old devil sold the weed. He got, got some sold in me right now. Just be honest and say it because we're all right there. Anybody here say, I don't have no weeds. I mean, I'm weed free. I'm, I'm sprayed with Roundup big time. I'm weed free. Dell ain't got nothing bad in my life. Anybody want to say that? 
If, if you do, you come up here and preach tonight, okay? Because <laughs> I listen to you. If your whole heart and life's round up and there's no, there's no tears, I listen to you instead of you listen to me. But I'm going to tell you, let's take this thing serious business. Life is short, and God desires the fruit of the Spirit in our life, not weeds and tears and destructive things by the devil. I ask you this morning, who's winning? What's getting sold in your life? Good seed or bad weeds? Turn your life over to the Lord. Be saved or rededicate yourself to Him. Somebody needs to be in the altar. Obey God, Brother Mark. Let's stand. Page number 396. 396, bottom of the page. When my way Precious Lord, linger near when my life is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord. dismiss our service. Sandra, it's good to have you. Amen. We love you. We miss you. And I know you've got a good church where you're tending with your husband, Alan. It's always good to see you walk in. Amen. I don't know why you can't get him to come down here. I'm teasing with you. Come when you can. Lisa. Tell you what, our police officers need prayers today. And I'm certainly not saying they're perfect. Any more than all of our preachers are perfect. I don't but I mean it's that's a tough we, you take the you take the police out of this world and see if you want to live in it, see what kind of violence you have and theft and you, you know what I'm saying? I mean they got a tough job and I appreciate them. I do.
I appreciate Chris being I know being a fine officer. Anything else? Brother Bill Crowder dismissed us. I'll be at the back. God bless you. Six o'clock tonight. We'll we'll get on a little bit further in this. Brother Bill dismisses.